Hello, this is Dr. Linda Davis, and today I want to work in Microsoft's Expression Web 2 and just show you how to construct your web pages, a beginning stage anyway. And what I have on the screen right now is a more or less complete idea of how Expression Web looks and what some web pages look like in Expression Web. Remember, this is not the browser view. This is not the internet view of how it would look. This is the construction view. In fact, we're in the design view. If you look down at the bottom left of your screen, we have the design view of Expression Web, which you see right now with the grid pattern up there. We have the split, which shows partly code, partly uh, which is HTML code, partly um, the actual design screen. And then if we click over to the third view, which is the just straight code, which is nothing but HTML code. This shows you what Expression Web is doing while you're uh, adding images and text and tables to your to your pages so it's building the code that re, um, reflects what you're doing in design view uh, also there is a browser view so let me go back to design view here where you build stuff basic your edit mode here and if you want design view uh, you just go up here and click on preview in Windows Internet Explorer or whichever browser you plan you know you should look at it in several browsers actually whether it be Internet Explorer or Safari or Firefox or um, Chrome or whatever and you can also click this button but yet you can also do um, your special function keys if I do F12 on your special function keys that launches the browser view for this page now I've also got some hyperlinks built in just to show you how these work I can click over the thumbnail for episode 1 and it changes to a hyperlink and I can click and it will take me to the episode 1 page I can click back on the home graphic in the episode one page to take me back to the home page here by Star Wars. Um, I can click on the uh, episode four thumbnail and that will take me to the episode four page. And again, this will take me back to the episode one page from the episode one graphic or the Roman numeral one graphic or home. Uh, so that's how you kind of build the navigation in from page to page. I also have an external Star Wars home page button here that would take me to the actual StarWars.com website. And also, you know, how to send email. That's probably for another video, but just to get you started, that's what we're doing today. So let me go back to Expression Web. And I'm going to exit out of all this and just start fresh. And just notice that you can have your multiple pages going up here to work on and see and build hyperlinks in. So that's the nice thing about Expression Web. It lets the multiple web page documents set up here because each web page is a separate .html document that you can work in. All right, let me get rid of uh, these already done ones and start with a new one, which that's your new button if you need to add, ask for that. Here's untitled underscore one dot HTML. Uh, I want to save it, but first of all, you have to have a folder of images handy. I'm going to go to my, for my students, they go to Drive S, and they're going to um, go to my teaching folder, my Davis folder, and they're going to go into the 240 folder and they're going to look for Star Wars Web Graphics 2 and that folder is, has lots of images in it. Now the key thing about web design, no matter which software program you're using, uh, you must save all your web pages in the same folder that your images are in, at least the same root folder. So they, everything's got to live in the same folder. So first of all we're going to copy this web, I'm sorry, these graphics over, so just go copy the whole folder and I'm just um, in Windows Explorer doing that. So let me copy this and go back to uh, my folder. Uh, my students will go back to their folder on Drive I. And I'll open up a kind of a practice um, folder. Let me just create one for practice purposes. Let me just call it Expression Web Tutorial. and I'll save, open it up, and I'll save my graphics in there and then as I create each new web page I am going to save it in this same folder. It is very important that I do that because with web pages your graphics are not really embedded into your web pages. Um, there's a path written for them to go, the browser to go find the image that goes in that spot. So if you've ever been on the internet and looked at a web page that had a place where a graphic should have gone, but there's a red X there instead, that just means that they lost the path to, it couldn't find the picture that goes there. So that's usually because web pages got moved 
around or images didn't make it into the folder or they've got it in the wrong subfolder those kind of things happen that mess it up so that's what makes web design so different from your other programs so everything's got to live in the same folder can't stress that enough now now that I've got it moved over I'm gonna just um, exit out of my Windows Explorer and go back to my expression web and this first page I've called up nothing on it yet just gonna give it a name gonna save it and I'm gonna make sure that I've um, got it in the right place so I saved that new folder in my um, expression web tutorial folder there it is Star Wars web graphics 2 I'm going to open that up and make sure that this web page gets saved in here now there's no other web pages in here yet and that's why there is a lots of graphics in here but obviously because we're saving it as a web page it's not it's hiding those from us right now so let me go in there and let me call it by Star Wars and usually your home page is called index.html but today I'm just doing it like this for the sake of um, knowing which page we're talking about better okay and we've got it named that I'm going to save the next thing I'm going to do is format the background and a few other things in this particular demonstration so I'm gonna to go to format um, background and formatting tab pops up that's what you're doing here colors background you see background you're gonna change it for this one it's black background you may remember from what I previewed and text color uh, is gonna be white now your hyperlink in various stages is all listed over here pick the colors you want for that so for ours today maroon for the hyperlink visited I want it to be navy active I want it to be maroon uh, hover is fine red or pick the color of your choice um, I'm not done quite in here besides formatting I want to move over to the general tab and under title now this is not a file name I just call it by Star Wars so no file extensions are needed and just say okay and just FYI if you do want sound in your web pages uh, this is where you browse back under background sound browse back to your sound file if you want it to loop forever then check mark that so just for your information also you all there's places to put keywords here for if it does hit the internet for people's searchability say okay we got the black background going on stop and save it and every time you need to save or you haven't saved your last change you'll see a little asterisk up here next to your tab name and um, that you just need to hit save now moving through we want to um, build a table so we're going to go to table icon or table menu item and say insert table and it wants to know how many rows how many columns uh, this one is uh, six by three so six rows three columns initially we do a lot of formatting to this so the layout or alignment is going to be center which is saying I want my table centered on the web page specify width yes I do but I do not want it in percent instead I want it 760 pixels that's just a good web width right there uh, you you're really doing 800 um, but you're accounting for the scroll bar that's so many pixels wide and the basic margin that goes around the whole web page so that accounts for that so 760 will work in pixels and down through here cell padding so spacing that's just white space active white space you build in we don't we want these set to zero we don't need those today borders keep them at zero if you don't want any border to show at all so zero works for us today background color we already said it's gonna be black so we'll set it to black again say okay this is what you end up this is what you have and then we're gonna format this quite a bit so good time to stop and save um, we're going to format our column width so highlight column one right click cell properties because you're only going to affect those certain cells and we want to specify the width um, we have 155 so let me get in here and go 155 in pixels apply okay column two highlight it right click cell properties specify width and we want to do 400 for that one whoops sorry about that. 400 let me get that in there in pixels and then column 3 highlight it right click cell properties uh, the last one is 205 and we want to get that in pixels as well and those three widths should add up to 760 so apply 
Okay. And the next thing we want to do is a, a bit of merging here. Um, merge means you're going to like take three cells, combine it down into one cell, one big cell. So highlight row one, all of row one, highlight it, uh, right click, you see modify about halfway down. Remember modify, merge, they both start with M's if that helps you remember how to get to merge. So go to merge cells, you can also split them, that's when you want to go take one cell and make it into two cells or something like that. But I'm going to stick with merge cells today. So merging takes the three cells, mix them into one big row. Um, also in this example, um, the rest of column one, the rest of it, the rest the remaining cells, um, actually not the remaining, let's see, it's two, three, and four actually, cells two, three, and four of column one. That's one cell, so we'll merge that one because we have a big graphic going in there. And same thing on the opposite side, cells two, three, and four of column three. We're going to merge that. Again, a big graphic goes over there. Now, um, row one, let's put some text in there. We'll stick red for this one. It's centered. It's bold. And I kind of work from left, right to left on these. It seems to stick better. Um, this is 36 point for the font size, and the font is going to be a book Antigua. And it's, we're going to put by. My red didn't stick for some reason. Let me try that again. And it changed everything else. Okay, red, center, turn the bold off. I'm going to reset these to 36. All right, let's try it again, see if it sticks. Oh, it doesn't want to do red font today for some reason. Okay. And remember, it turned everything else off. See, now it won't stick my color. All right. It is glitchy. Doesn't want to center today. Let me try it this way since it's glitching. Let me just type the text in and I'll just highlight it and see if it'll let me change it like that. Don't really know what's going on with it, but whatever. Um, BuyStarWars.com. I've just typed it, but I'm going to make it red, going to make it centered, going to make it bold, and the default, or I'm sorry, the font size is going to, is going to be 36 point and book Antigua. Okay, that seemed to make it work like that. There's always a workaround. And then I'm going to go over here to where we have an image. Um, big image. It's going to really uh, take up some space here when we insert it. So I'm going to insert picture from file, just like you do in PowerPoint or any other Office program. And I'm going to go to that same folder where the image is. It's very important that you go back to your folder and bring up your Star Wars Web Graphics 2 or the same folder that you're using for all your graphics and this one's called Star Wars COL1 for my students and picture of Darth Maul insert that now accessibility properties when that pops up that just helps uh, visually impaired people who have screen readers you know it'll read to them whatever you type in there let's do this is a picture of Darth Maul for instance so um, I don't really want to see that anymore today, so um, just for the sake of time. So we'll plug Darth Maul in. Now, um, we do want active white space going on in here, and even though I said white and it's a black background, active white space just means an area in, in the web page where there is no text or images, so leave that blank. Um, on the opposite side over here, we do have another image. We'll go get that one, so we'll insert picture from file to make that happen. Um, that is Star Wars COL2. So we'll go down and get that one. And 
again like I said leave that space unused basically it'll shrink up some more after we get everything else planted go down a cell and we're gonna put six thumbnail images in this one cell so yes everything's gonna fit so we're gonna insert picture from file and this is called episode one so let's go down to the ease and right next to it but don't do anything but just insert episode two And yeah, just making sure I'm in the right folder. I don't want to have that problem. Uh, episode two thumbnail is right there. Now, this will be centered eventually, but I'm going to do a shift enter here on my keyboard. Shift and enter together. That keeps it tight. So when it goes down to the next row, it doesn't um, underneath it doesn't uh, make too much of a gap there. So then we did episode um, three thumbnail. Episode four. I'm just gonna go pretty fast on these. And shift enter again. And insert five and six as well. So episode five and insert right next to it episode six. Now, I didn't center them, I probably should have, but I can just go in the cell and hit center, and it'll move them all over nicely to the center. You know, eventually, yes, we create hyperlinks with some of these, but let's get everything placed on this page first. Now, go down to the next cell underneath, and we have a bit of text there, so let me center that text. It is going to be um, white. We'll see how it handles the text this time. Bold, this time smaller. It's like 14 point uh, times new Roman. And this is going to say, welcome to the unofficial website. Do a shift enter to keep that tight so we have no large gaps there. Star Wars action figures. And we have a few um, graphics going down on in here. We have um, the email graphics so we'll insert that one. obviously just called email. It hugs the left side of that cell so that's all good. And under this we have white space, active white space on this row. We won't put anything in there. The bottom middle we have a credit card graphic that's centered so I'll insert picture from file and look for the credit card one called credit card obviously. And the last cell bottom right corner is the Star Wars button that goes right here. Now it's going to hug the right side so I gotta change the alignment to hug the right. So we'll insert picture from file and that one's called Star Wars button. There we go. Okay. And um, that's has everything placed. I tell my students to like go outside the table because you can you're not locked just to typing or putting things inside the table. You can go outside too and you can put, you know, created by and then your name here. And um, let's just save it of course and do a F12 and let's just, um, a special function key F12 that is, and just kind of see how this looks. And I think it looks pretty good on the screen. Uh, I think created by I need to adjust that a bit. So let me go back to Expression Web and get out of Browser View. And let me back this up just a little bit more. Because sometimes, you know, what you think it's going to look like in the browser based on what you see in the design mode is not what you end up with. So good idea to always check. Different browsers, different versions can display things in all kinds of different ways. Alright, so that takes care of that page. Now, um, I think I will stop the video because of time on this one and then I will jump back in with doing the next page and then creating some hyperlinks as well. Thank you.